welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow, India's only daily television platform for small businesses. We bring you the right information to empower you, the SME entrepreneur. Tonight on the show, highlights of a jury round that we did ahead of the Leaders of Tomorrow Conclave and Awards. And on the other side of a short break, Shuttle is in focus. Every year here on the Leaders of Tomorrow, we do a one-of-its-kind award show celebrating entrepreneurs who won across different categories. This year, we had a jury round deciding who those winners are, drawn from the who's who of India Inc. Some of the biggest names, including an Ajay Chaudhary as well as Vineet Nair, met with nominees across nine different categories to deliberate on the winners. Tonight, bringing you highlights of the jury round. Take a listen. Leaders of Tomorrow, India's biggest SME platform which recognizes emerging leaders and empowers them is hosting the 7th edition of the Leaders of Tomorrow Awards. For 7 years now, we here at ET Now on the Leaders of Tomorrow have brought you some of the biggest names and the Leaders of Tomorrow Conclave and Awards is the biggest yet. From stock market investment gurus to some of the best, from whether it's the retail industry, the FMCG space, technology or transport, we have them all joining us for the conclave and awards on the 25th of September. As a precursor to the majestic ceremony, we held a jury meet to pick the country's finest SMEs from a selected list of nominees. An esteemed jury comprising of the biggest names from India Inc. put India's SMEs and entrepreneurs across nine different sectors to the test. Here's what they had to say about the list of nominees and the pre-jury process. Uh, it was good working with the jury because uh, I think we were able to discuss and uh, go through a process of finding the right people for each category. And uh, I think uh, uh, this platform will be very valuable for entrepreneurs for future because when they get this kind of recognition, they want to really want to work hard to go ahead. Uh, we've seen a whole range of companies today from uh, IT to logistics to insurance to uh, you know, agriculture and it's been very interesting from that perspective. Uh, I think a lot of these businesses you're seeing entrepreneurship from uh, really the ground up uh, which is always exciting to see having been a promoter and an entrepreneur myself I know how hard it is to build these these uh, these businesses and you've seen the kind of resilience and the kind of uh, commitment uh, from these entrepreneurs some of them who've been washed out after 10 years of business and restarted again uh, so it's quite uh, exhilarating to watch. So I think the platform is unique in itself because it gives you a complete different story as to what's happening across the across the across the industries there's so many different people coming up with their different ideas and thoughts and then f you're seeing them how are they actually trying to bring it to life and i think that's a wonderful journey because you know it's important for a lot of lot of young India to get inspired by these entrepreneurs today and actually that's how that's how the business will grow and that's how the economy will develop over a period of time. I truly believe that uh, if you are going to lead tomorrow uh, and you are in the process of building your organization to lead tomorrow uh, you definitely need uh, to be competitive to compete to try and benchmark yourself with others and to try and gain recognition so that people take you more seriously. It's like a certification process. So once you're certified uh, through a jury process that you are best in class, uh, then funding is easy, uh, customers are easy, uh, employing uh, high growth talent is easy, and therefore you're all set for the future. No, I think, uh, first of all, India is a large country and you know, for such a large country's economy to be driven, there's going to be a huge amount of contribution from the MSME and the SME sector. So the large corporates can only contribute that much. At the grassroots level, it is the MSME and the SME sector who's actually going to contribute both towards manufacturing and the services sector. So I think um, ability of execution of these companies sometimes can be really good, sometimes incredible. I think the government needs to ensure that the availability of capital for this company are made easily available or better available for them to grow and I think this is extremely important with respect to the growth of the GDP of this country. So one of the key things is that they need to plan well for the future 
and you know if you look at smaller companies they actually go on a lot on intuition and i get a feel that intuition works very well because they know their industry they know their markets well but i think if they start planning and thinking big they're going to do extremely well because that planning cycle and developing people in their whole own organization becomes very very critical to their success in the future and i i must say that developing people a lot of the entrepreneurs who came today are doing that very well but they should continue that path and do even better on that front because that's what's going to lead them to success well i think it's uh, for smes for entrepreneurs i think uh, uh, they are probably not able to spend the big bucks that some of the larger companies are able to do uh, you know to kind of sell their ideas and you know and i very strongly believe in what i call as the three c's you know uh, create create communicate and collaborate uh, i think this kind of a platform gives you that opportunity for entrepreneurs and msmes to come in and you know and communicate what they have done how creative they are and in some sense this will also kind of build in collaborations because when people hear you and what you've done uh, they'll probably reach out to you and then try and help you uh, in in multiple ways so for example i noted today a couple of uh, entrepreneurs that i'm quite keen to follow up with and uh, you know and see where it leads us from on the education front so i think it it, it gives them a good platform to a showcase themselves communicate their uh, their creativity their vision their innovativeness and i think that is very important for uh, uh, all of us who follow the etnow program to see and it will definitely ring a bell somewhere and i think they will get the contacts and i think it's all about networking it's all about uh, building an ecosystem and working with the ecosystem and i think that's where the etnow platform is very important so one big advice which i would like to give is any business uh, people is a very important piece uh, while entrepreneurs are focusing on their business it's really important to create more entrepreneurs within their own teams so that it it reduces the burden of the main entrepreneur in focusing this business the other entrepreneurs within the company who are also called employees can then focus on the overall growth of the company the top smes in all the nine categories put their best foot forward in front of the esteemed jury the entrepreneurs head back home with valuable advice and a once in a lifetime experience the entrepreneurs head back home with valuable advice and a once in a lifetime experience i think uh, uh for smes it's i think it's a golden hand which holds uh, et uh, concept platform on the media uh, visual media uh, i think it's a wonderful platform for smes uh, though smes are more hands on kind of companies who are more uh, involved in day to day operations so the from morning till uh, 24 by 7 smes are mostly involved in their businesses an opportunity to be to showcase their products or the services per se is always a welcome thing and i think uh, uh, et now has uh, done a yeoman's job in uh, making sure the smes uh, and their uh, sectors are taken take, uh, are, sh- are showcased in a positive way and so that uh basically india shines and india grows so i think you guys are doing a great job because companies like us which are sme you know uh, we cannot spend too much of money on pr and media and marketing and branding right so this gives us a great platform for us to show people in india what we are doing and uh, yeah so this this pr is going to really help and when we are uh, on such an expansion spree we are working so hard to uh, you know uh, be a large player i think this will give us a great uh, platform for entire india to see what we are doing and the good work that we have done over the last so many years yeah i think my so our company is focused on helping smes uh, make payments and also infuse credit into supply chain ecosystems so i think your platform is a perfect uh, launch pad for us to reach out to the millions of small smes in india you know we have 50 million small smes in india uh, all powering our economy with close to 40% of our gdp so so this is a great platform for us to reach out to that uh, ecosystem actually these platforms like these are very essential one is it gives us a boost that yes okay we are being recognized and secondly awareness is created that there are various avenues where we can also showcase our products and it gives us a little bit of uh, confidence that yes you are being recognized and it gives you a further boost that yes you should do better and you know create an awareness in the world also for us also otherwise we are like in the dark not really recognized 
So this definitely gives you a, a push, a boost. Let's take a quick break. Shuttle is in focus on the other side. Just stay tuned. On the Leaders of Tomorrow, we bring you interviews with some of the most innovative companies across India. And tonight, one such company in focus, Shuttle is fast becoming a company being recognized with innovation in the transport space. Listen to this interview that we did earlier. Amit, thanks very much for taking the time out to speak with us here tonight uh, on the Leaders of Tomorrow. My first question for you is really how the face of public transport in India has changed. The past two or three years has seen a dramatic change. So I just want to kick this conversation off by understanding you know, some of the biggest changes you're seeing and also how you're viewing this changing landscape. Okay, so in the last few years, with what we have gone through, uh, particularly in the city of Delhi, I think our realization for the problems of pollution and congestion has increased. We now know uh, that we need less cars on the road. We know the gravity of the situation. And somewhere the appreciation for what we bring to the table by being a credible alternative to cars, that appreciation has gone up. Uh, it has gone up amongst our consumers, amongst policymakers, and actually in media also. So uh, this whole narrative around uh, a, a carbon efficient solution uh, has helped our business and uh, we see consumers championing the cause, talking to their colleagues and uh, helping them on board uh, uh, you know, to our, to our uh, platform. So that has been the key change that we have seen in the last few years. We're talking at a time when uh, the Delhi government, uh, uh, amongst other state governments, is talking about bringing down the number of private vehicles on roads and therefore bringing down pollution. Are you working with any state governments, anything that you can talk to us about? And also the broader move in terms of bringing down the number of private vehicles that we're seeing on roads? Uh, so uh, uh, the short answer is that we are not working with any of the state governments uh, in a uh, PPP or a different model. Uh, what we do uh, for sure is uh, we try to evangelize bus uh, as a solution uh, because buses we believe are the most space efficient, cost efficient and actually carbon efficient way of moving people within cities. So when it comes to forums, events around smart cities or urban mobility, we try to evangelize this solution. So uh, it takes a while to appreciate technology and what technology can do. Uh, we're seeing that appreciation coming. So hopefully things will change in the, in the future and we'll be working uh, more closely uh, with state governments uh, you know, and in different cities. Okay, uh, this uh, and you know I'm sort of just thinking out aloud, Amit. Uh, do you think there's maybe the opportunity for companies like yourself to work with the government on a PPP model when it comes to public transport, and also maybe your thoughts really on how uh, you uh, as a company can maybe work with corporates and offer your services there? Yes, both are actually uh, huge in their own ways. Uh, talking about corporates, we already uh, do that. We work with a lot of corporate corporates who want to kind of. Uh, improve the productivity of the people because they come to office fresh, they can use the time in the, uh, in the shuttles uh, to their advantage. So a lot of corporates work with us. Uh, talking about PPP, uh, I think we need to come up with the right framework. Uh, today, uh, it's more about giving buses, running buses, and less about uh, actually uh, technology, how to use technology uh, such that we are able to bring efficiency and reliability in our services. So I think that we have not uh, really understood well uh, how to come up with that solution. Very often when we talk to players like, uh, say, yourself, uh, the perception is that the product or the service that you're offering is costly when compared to the other alternatives that exist in the market, particularly because players like you would offer, say, you know, an AC option versus a non-AC option. Uh, is that perception correct? How are you tackling that perception? And also, what do you have to say really on the pricing and sort of, the, you know, the cost difference really, Amit? So uh, I don't think that's a dominant perception. Uh, AC is not really a luxury anymore in the kind of weather we live and in the times that we live. Uh, we charge roughly around 2 rupees a kilometer 
uh, which is very competitive. Uh, yes, it does happen that sometimes you know people do not factor in their last mile cost, their first mile cost. They definitely do not factor in the parking charges. They don't factor in the fact that they are actually wasting their time by you know kind of either standing or driving. I think those things get missed out. But once people use a service. Uh, they get uh, they, they they realize very quickly that you know this is real value for money. So we are not really dealing with uh, that perception of uh, that we being expensive. In fact, buses give you a perception that they are going to be economical. I want to talk about funding. You received funding and raised funding from Sequoia and Lightspeed, amongst others. What was that experience like? And also, do you think it's perhaps now becoming easier with more players entering the logistics and transport space for uh, entrepreneurs like yourself to raise funding in this industry? So, uh, our, uh, you know, our experience has been, you know, kind of uh, very, very encouraging. Uh, we have a board. We have been, you know, actually blessed with a very supportive and uh, constructive board. Uh, they do engage with us, but they give us uh, a long rope to take the right decisions and, you know, kind of to, they back our decisions. Uh, so for any fellow entrepreneur, I would really uh, recommend uh, our investors uh, if they have the choice to take capital from them. Um, on, on your other question around uh, has the funding environment improved for this space, uh, I think what we're seeing is, you know, it is coming from top down. Uh, the larger players have been able to kind of turn the corner uh, around. They have been able to raise uh, very large size checks. And uh, uh, it's getting, you know, kind of to the mid segment today. And uh, I think it will keep going uh, to smaller companies also. So I, I would assume that, I, I would believe that in the next uh, 18 months, we would see, uh, you know, even uh, much younger startups uh, raising capital in the space. So I'm positive. Do you think it's possible to replicate uh, global models uh, here in India, Amit, when it comes to offering transport solutions and products? You were talking about Uber a short while earlier. Do you think it's easy to just pick up these global models and replicate it here in India? Or do you think that perhaps uh, in India, the challenges are so different that the solutions we have to offer here have to be different? So yes and no. Uh, obviously, if there is a successful global model, uh, we should study it. We should see if that can be adopted. Uh, uh, that's how best practices, you know, kind of uh, come through. Uh, but that is step two for me. Step one would be to first uh, really understand who we are, what our problems are, what is our, what are our constraints, and then see, you know, if those solutions can apply into this uh, uh, kind of a construct. Force fitting really works in my view. Uh, so, uh, you know, like we need to understand that uh, a solution designed for a country with more than 80% vehicle penetration may not be, uh, you know, uh, exactly deployable in a country with around 5% vehicle penetration. So we need to put a thought on those things maybe. Okay, let's talk about regulation. And since we were talking about Uber, I do that, know that you know, uh, not too long ago, the government uh, had a bit of a back and forth when it came to certain services in the transport space about whether they were technology companies or you know, transport service providers. My broader question, though, is on the nature of regulation when it comes to the transport industry in India. Do you think perhaps uh, there, uh, there exists now regulation uh, to subsume all future forms of uh, innovation that may come about in this industry. Are you happy with what you're seeing? Uh, any changes there in the regulation as far as the transport space is concerned you want to see? All right. Uh, so so give you, to give you a context, uh, see, what are we doing? We are actually trying to give, give people a credible alternative to commute. In the process, we are reducing congestion, we are reducing pollution, we are giving them uh, something which is safer and maybe you know possibly increase their productivity. Uh, I, I, I would be surprised if government doesn't want that. This is exactly what the government also wants. Uh, and in the process, the cars are you know get, getting you know we are getting lesser thousands of uh, less cars are there on the roads every day now. So uh, I think the uh, end goal is same. The mission is the same. We just need to understand and find a way uh, to work together. So as far as the regulation is concerned, I, I don't see much of a challenge as far as our particular space is concerned. Uh, yes, you know, if there's a wish list, I would like to, you know, kind of talk about uh, the taxation part, the passenger tax and related taxes. I think, you know, the kind of taxes we have uh, uh, on cabs, uh, and I'm talking about per seat tax, uh, today it is, uh, uh, per seat tax on buses is higher than that on cabs, uh, which is a distortion which needs to be corrected. 
Very quickly, uh, what's been the impact of GST for you? So the way I see GST uh, is, uh, so there has been no significant positive or negative impact on us in the short term. But in the long term, what I see GST as uh, it may builds, uh, it creates uh, you know kind of a framework wherein companies which are paying taxes, uh, if anyone in the in the value chain starts paying tax, which was who was not paying tax earlier, it is good for organized players. So in that sense, it is positive for us. But it'll take a while to kind of show up in our uh, kind of uh, financials. All right, our last question, Amit. Then. Uh what else is on the cards for you? You were talking earlier about working with state governments. Uh, anything else that uh, you perhaps can leave our viewers with? So actually, if I talk about a focus, it is largely to work on two key uh, dimensions of our business, which are efficiency and reliability. So what I mean is uh, operational efficiency and service reliability. Yeah, it may sound boring uh, and may not be even newsworthy, but uh, actually, if we can keep doing better on these, we have come a long way, but there's a long way to go forward. Uh, if you can keep doing that, this is what will make Shuttle uh, possibly the largest and the most loved uh, mobility solution. So that's what we are currently focused on. Amit Singh, thank you very much for speaking with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow. If you have any feedback for us, here's how you get in touch. Leaders of Tomorrow Times Group .com is our email ID. You can also get in touch with us on social media. Tweet at me at Sunanda underscore J or LOT underscore ET now. You can also reach us on our Facebook page, Leaders of Tomorrow on ET now. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.